One of my favorite tools in the shop is the sauna cleaner. The sauna cleaner has done me right for the last year and a half, and it gets parts squeaky clean with minimal effort. Game changer for the cycling world. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hello, welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin, the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. Taking scary out of used bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hey, I'm Justin, the guy. Today, we're going to talk about sauna cleaners. Why do shops use sauna cleaners? Good point. I'll tell you why. They are a lot nicer to use than the old solvent tanks, so it's game changer. Also, plus it has a heating element that actually increases the temperature of the solution, which actually gets in those little nits and crannies and so forth. There's several different types of sauna cleaners on there. I just got some generic kind of one, whatever, that seemed to work really well. Uh, it's a Vibar, V-E-V-O-R. Anyway, I didn't really know too much about them. I just was able to pick this one up for pretty inexpensively. Uh, they sell them on Amazon or wherever you can find sauna cleaners. But the thing is, for me, I wanted to be able to accommodate cranks, so I had to get a pretty decent size of one. I'm a little bit more leader size and depth. You can do smaller ones just to do your like smaller parts if you want, and also jewelry, which is really known with that industry. But we're going to talk about this sauna cleaner. Um, temperature goes up to, you know, it's based on Celsius, so it's warm. <laughs> Pretty hot bath water is usually about the temperature you want to go with. Not enough to burn you, but enough to really kind of penetrate the parts. And on the times, I usually go by five minute segments when I clean stuff. But in this kit, in segment, I'm going to actually reflush, replenish the fluids because this has gotten all kinds of gunky. Ugh. What's nice about it, most of these, they have a little spill out. So you don't have to worry about uh, uh, tilting it or carrying it over. You can get really fancy and have a hose that goes down, that kind of thing. And while this is draining, it's gonna be um, the, you know, all the gunk that's been built up in there. And what I also like to do is take like a brush and kind of stir up the gunk that was in there, that kind of thing. And this is actually not too bad. Um, but you want to replenish it, you know, before it gets too, it just doesn't work as well. I mean, you can use it as long as you want, then it becomes a sludge and it's really a big mess. Um, it's good to do it. I mean, if you're doing parts all the time, replenish it um, once in a while. And if you're only using it very limited, I would completely drain it and keep it dry until you use it again. But don't run these things when they're empty. It's not good for them all, like any other, thing, any other parts. I got a little bucket system here that catches the, the water that's draining out. And what I'll do is basically for me, I've done so many of these, I keep the old tubes in a container, so I fill these up with hot water. And then I have this one, I do about a third, the two of these. And I'm usually pretty good to the ratio. And there's a ratio chart on the simple green of how much you want to use. Um, I usually don't do too concentrated because I do flush it out quite a bit because it gets gunky really quick for me. Um, but for you, you might want to leave it more concentrated. But that's that's up to you <laughs> kind of thing. While this is draining, I'm going to go grab some hot water. So it's starting to drain to the bottom here. And I'll have to give it a little bit of help to get to the bottom bit of it. And uh, it gets blacker at the bottom. Oh. Nasty, nasty stuff. Kind of squish it around to get most of it out. And this way, too, I use hot water to replenish it so it's already at temperature. So I'm ready to cook some more parts. It's ready to go. Pull that up. So now, since my other one is still filling up, I use a little bit of fresh hot water to kind of drain out. So it's less clean for me. Kind of run through. Give it a good flush, fresh water. And I have a, uh, yeah, right? 
Oh, there it is. Uh, this is a good opportunity to give it a good little cleaning. That kind of thing. Alright. Okay, I got my witch's brew mess here, so I'll dispose of that correctly. And move my block over. So now just give it a good little cleaning inspection. Put it back in its place where it's going to stay for a while through the next cycle. You know, keep keep your tools clean and in shape. Work your wonders. And also you want to unplug these guys um, when you're using them. So, or when you're replacing the fluids. So here, I have it down to here, looking through it. So I'm gonna probably go down about here to be a third. This is just your simple green. Again, you can get it at Amazon, Walmart, wherever your simple green person is. These are, you know, let's say it's uh, economical for the bigger ones. Um, yeah, all purpose, it's supposed to be, you know, not too, too harming to the world. <laughs> Grab my water. So when I'm really busy doing a lot of repair and a lot of repairs and so forth, I'll be cleaning this once or twice a week. Um, on the slower months, maybe just once or twice a month, but I do err on the side of cleaning them. Still need a little bit more water because I still have about a half a finger left. Here we go for the topping it off. Sometimes I'll leave it a little low because I know I'll be adding some extra. So here's a couple tricks when you're using a sauna cleaner. Um, for the stubborn parts like chains that you can get inside a, a bag um, or a jar, you can fill the jar and the bag with straight simple green to help clean those parts that are being more stubborn. Um, and then I can just pour out the remainder back into the tank so I leave a little bit of extra fluid in there for that. And uh, now it's ready to fire, so I'll plug it back in, it turns on. So what I'm looking at here is the Celsius, it's setting the preset to 50. I can turn that on or turn that off. Um, I don't. I didn't get my water too hot, so it still has a little bit of work to get up to there. This presets to five minutes. So you can do multiple like cycles. I do just five minutes at a time and check it. It gives, it gives me a good gauge. Sometimes you don't need more than that. Because if you go too long, it'll start peeling off decals and so forth. And you don't want that on your parts and so forth. And obviously you want it to be uh, you know, pretty green uh, versus ugly green. Um, so anyway, that's how that works. And Put these guys in, make sure everything is covered. Oh, oh. And that's how I can start the process of cleaning, by just hitting the start. But what I was talking about, if you have a stubborn part, you can put it in here and put in some, you know, either you can set it in there or glass and the, the Sonic will go through it, or you can use a Ziploc bag that can you know, conceal that side the uh, simple green concentrate and put that chain in there and can set. And I'll do it like five minutes and just shake around inside the bag and it'll kind of loosen up and break, break things apart and clean it. And that's a good way to do a concentrate. I won't do these on derailers or shifters because the concentration is a little bit too strong. Um, that's why I like to dilution, a pretty light dilution, um, because I, I don't want to like strip finishes and coloring. I just want it to you know, break down the grease and so forth. And that's why I do a couple cycles. So that's how a sonic cleaner is clean and also ready to go. So if you like videos like this, please uh, subscribe and like. And um, until next time from the garage, have a great day.